Hey guys, this is Azra here, back on Gentechi.net, and we've got industrial genomics again, and today we are up against noise. Um, this is probably one of the slightly tougher matchups. Um, yeah, I'm playing against Crapstorm here, who just randomly jumped into a game with me and was happy enough for um, for me to kind of record this. I'm just going to give him a quick message. So just filling him in. So obviously these videos for me, um, it's trying to get into a bit of a routine, playing some more online, trying to prepare for the upcoming regionals, learning a bit more about my own play style, getting to watch them back, and hopefully giving something that's a little bit entertaining or maybe a little bit interesting to you guys. Um, <laughs> Crapstorm giving a heads up that we might see some embarrassingly bad plays. But I don't know, noise is always a threat. You never know what noise can produce. So um, I will very much give best of luck to Crapstorm in the future and past. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. So this is definitely a mull. Uh, I feel I love Hive early. I love Shark early. Heritage Committee is actually not that bad, but I don't want this at all. Um, this is substantially better. Uh, double hostile is a bit overly aggressive. Um, yeah, so I like. I don't think we'll be installing both of those straight away, but having them early is good. We definitely want to see a Jackson. Museum gives us a huge benefit. If we can keep a museum alive, um, it's going to really help us against noise. That being said, um, Imp is obviously a huge amount of pressure, as is Medium, because we're only running a small amount of traps. Two, shit, two snares, three shocks, and one fetal. Not, not the worst for a runner to kind of deep dig into. So what do we get? Oh, Mumbad City Hall is good. Um, yeah, this is pretty nice, actually. I'm just thinking what the best way I want to go about this. I would love to get the shock into the bin early, but I'm not too concerned about that. I just don't want to start losing things to imp left, right, and center. Kamainu is great, and do you know what? I think I'm going to put the Kamainu over HQ just to support us through what could potentially be um, Lamprey plays. And Lamprey is a little bit of a threat to us, actually. So let's throw that down, and we'll throw down the Mampa Temple. This is an okay start. I'm all right with this. I'm, I think I'm happy to take it a little bit slowly. The great thing about this Mumbad City Hall is we can just dig and search for our museums, which is just ridiculous. And nice opening. That's awesome. So we're going to have a game here. This will be great. Another Kamainu is pretty baller for us, actually. Let's continue to draw a bit. And museum's good early. I'm going to actually draw again. Ooh, cerebral static. Now, our R&D is currently chock a block with stuff, but that could be great for us. So I think at this stage, the snare's too early, and the shock I'm fine to just get rid of for now. I don't really want to pay for the snare at this stage. Not when I've got some real juicy uh, servers here and a cerebral static which could really slow up his game if we we're able to keep him away from an agenda so if we can avoid getting an agenda milled here we're going to be kind of happy so yeah this is going to be an interesting one obviously net damage for us could take out a levy and um, could take out clone chips if he's going with that kind of build um, oh, liberated accounts. Not something you see a huge amount of noise, actually. Oh, there's a Jackson. Oh, man. Okay. So we're actually getting things in a pretty reasonable order here. But I think I actually want to dig for more Mumba temples right now. So I think we res this. We'll take a credit and res this one. This will let us get another Mumba which is just fantastic, which we can basically res immediately. And then the question is, do I want to just draw again or should we get this museum into play? Or we could always just cerebral static and basically say, it's your turn to come to us. Mm, or we could put out the hostile. Oh, we have a, a whole array of options here, actually. Hmm, I think I might just do the cerebral. Um, he's only got, he's got zero credits, so if he does start to run, we do have two face downs, so you'll have to go and take a net damage. Yeah, I think I'm going to put out the Cerebral, and this is why we run two of these. This hurts Wizard, it hurts Noise. Um, I mean, it's okay against the likes of Kate, even the likes of Healy. 
<laughs> oh no. So he's just let me know that he's on his laptop at the minute and by the 12th remote it starts to get pretty difficult for him to read the text and there's 31 assets in this deck so I'm hoping it doesn't become completely unreadable for him here because that would be pretty sad and pretty difficult for him to deal with. Oh, hang on. Is he maybe changing his mind slightly? Or did that not click right? What happened? Oh. Ah. There you go, got it trashed. Um, ooh, Bioethics Association comes out at a really good time. So we actually have so much of what we want here. And actually what I think I want to do is just kind of overdraw a little bit, actually. I'd really like to get an extra ice over archives. So let's get the Jackson out. Um, oh, wow, this is just an incredible hand right now. Oh man, I'm gonna, I really want to rev something, I don't want to waste these credits, so I think I'm going to throw out the bioethics. If it comes to the Jackson, I'm pretty happy to let him have it, considering that we've got a museum in hand that we can also just um, tutor for a museum with him on Bad City Hall. And this is the thing about this deck, I just never feel like I'm out of control, even when I'm just being account siphoned or mecker's eye. I never feel like there's a point where the runner is just about to do something awful to me. Imp is pretty horrible. Like Imp is not what I want to see. Grave Digger is a bit of a pain. Thankfully we don't lose anything to it. Um, yeah, so we're going to have to just let him in to trash that, which is fair enough. And it's definitely the right trash in my mind. It's, it's really good to get rid of that. Um, and Oh, we used Grave Digger then to get rid of GFI, which was nice actually. So Grave Digger, whenever an installed card is trashed, place one virus counter on Grave Digger, and then you can use a host of virus counter to trash a card from R&D. So a bit long-winded, but actually pretty good when you're going to be trashing a lot of assets. But we, in return, are about to start doing damage back. So let's continue to draw. Turtle Bags is decent, although I don't feel like we super need the money. Hmm. What we definitely need is just to get more cards into this uh, this archives here to avoid him trashing. It's just whether or not I want to devote the money and sort of time to uh, to using Hive here. And I think the answer is probably yes, actually. So yeah, let's cover archives with Hive. And let's get a museum on the board or a turtle backs. Museum could avoid us having to use our Jackson, which would be great. So I think I'll go down that route. And for now, I think we could probably just drop the Cerebral Static. Um, yeah. So now we've got four face down cards. The Imp, of course, isn't going to care about that. So I would really like to get the hostile infrastructures onto the board. But I'm still sitting kind of pretty here. Um, so yeah, again, I think that's absolutely the right call. And Imp and Grave Digger are doing really nice work here together. I think it's actually a pretty awesome combo. Although he bins a shock face down, which kind of does the work for us a little bit. And I guess that's one thing to think about with Noise. If he is putting things in there that we want in there already, then it's actually not doing a great deal for him. We'll get our museum up. And I think just tucking back the food for now, just to be safe. Avoiding any possibility of like a Hades. Um, Coming down, Hades Shard, Hades Fragment. I always forget, I think it's Shard. Yeah, I think it's Fragment. Never remember which one it is, but anyway, I want to just avoid getting surprised by that. And knowing that we have two shocks in there is pretty nice, actually. There's a Crick. Mm. Oh, Where's the Turtle Backs? And then potentially, I was thinking double hostile, but maybe just. Single hostile, single text startup might be the play. I think we don't really have the credits right now to uh, do double hostile. We are running just basically one diversified portfolio, and that essentially outside of Turtlebacks 
uh, and Mumba Temples is the only economy in the deck, and that alone is just an incredible fight. Now, Noise has his engine going here really quite well. And if he does run here, he's going to force us to res a hostile infrastructure for much more than we want to, because ideally we don't want to be doing it when we don't have the temple credits. Um, so we will take an action. And we will res it to try and put some more pressure on him. Oh, it's premature to click. I'm not sure what happened. Um, what happened? Oh. So he doesn't actually want to use the imp, which is fair enough. Mm. He's just trying to set the counters back to two. Ah, I'm not 100% sure. Um, so he's trying, to, he's trying to, I guess, either trash this with cash or to not trash it at all possibly because of the net damage. Um, he's trying to set the imp counter to two. It's not something I actually know how to do myself. Uh, oh, did he mean to do that? Oh, four, five. Or did he mean to imp it? I'm not sure. The problems of Jinteki.net, unfortunately, sometimes make things a little bit difficult. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's putting himself back up to seven. That's okay. Uh, no problem. So that's okay for us, not the not the absolute worst. Uh, I think we're probably gonna grab a Mumbad City Hall here to start getting our museums back into play. So let's grab the Mumbad City Hall into a new remote and then mandatory draw. And yeah, so this way we can basically just say, you know, thanks so much for coming in, trashing the museums, trashing the Mumbad City Halls, and now we can just basically um, cover them back up again. We can just basically reinstall them. We've got no agendas, so we're not scared um, of any kind of um, Hades coming down here and ruining our day. So yeah, let's just museum. And this is just absolutely ridiculous. I almost feel like they need to do something about this card. Um, I guess just another Mumba Temple. And I very much hope you can still see everything. And sorry guys, I'm going to have to zoom out at least one little nudge here because now we've got three Mumbas and two museums on the board. And essentially he, he can't deal with all of this right now. Oh, another imp comes down. We could have potentially installed another hostile, which would have been good. Because um, obviously he's going to go trash this here. Um, but he's going to run out of imps eventually. And we're just going to slowly do net damage. He's actually running a Crypsis, which is pretty interesting. Really doubling down on the viruses. And again, he's got two counters on the, uh, the Grave Digger. Uh, I don't think we want to do anything with this. But he's very right to go and get the museums. Absolutely right. And it looks like he's got a deck here which is really doing pretty well against this matchup. So this is a great game. We may potentially have to use a Jackson here. Um, so we'll just go ahead and res these guys up. And with this museum we will grab a museum back and then draw and then what we can do 
is basically just grab the museum back out. We can stick out another hostile and we could potentially, if we really wanted, we could put a crick in front of in front of one of our museums. In fact, I might just do that. Yeah, do you know what I'm gonna? I think they're so crucial for us to keep them alive that it's worth it. And right now he has no breakers, and we still have no agendas in the bin, but two in hand, which means there's actually seven in R and D right now. So R and D's pretty loaded. And there is medium, just as we mention it. Okay, so he's gonna run with no breaker. That's pretty ballsy. And we've kind of forced him into the situation really to make a bit more of a brash play. And I think this uh, is gonna go pretty bad. So six net, we see a data sucker. Caddy Jones, another Caddy Jones, sure gamble, just a chronotype, and an iPad worse was the last card. <laughs> so he's going to go in. Now, do we want to try and shuffle maybe a snare? Mm. Yeah, I think I'm going to shuffle some stuff back in here, actually. So let's put a snare. Uh, let's put the... Bioethics, potentially. Maybe the museum, actually. We'll put a snare at museum and... Mm, tech startup back in. And if we hit him with a snare, we're going to be absolutely elated. We're only running two, though. We're hoping for no agenda. Fetal would be okay i wouldn't mind him getting a fetal from us and um, with two quarters predators in hand so that's okay uh, one fetal three global food and three future perfect so overall pretty horrible uh, agenda pull for the runner to have to work his way through i could see the rationale behind running um a second fetal instead of the two chronos projects freeing up another card but that being said, the Kronos project can be so good against decks that are requiring Levy to stay alive if you can take out the majority of their bin. And I might well purge here next turn, actually. I actually just realized got a stare in hand, of course, so it wasn't unfortunately probably going to get lucky. It would have been a 129, which is a bit of a ridiculous ask. And this is the thing, I can't really see a huge weakness of this deck. So if any of you guys have any insight into how to beat this IG deck, please, please give it to me. I think the one thing that came to my mind was very much, um, was very much, do, 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 when I think out loud, um, using Eater. So using Eater to basically run on archives, break a piece of ice, and then not actually access. So you reveal all cards, they all get turned face up, but you don't end up accessing anything. And that potentially um, would be a very strong card against this deck. Um, now we're going to put back in uh, Turtlebacks as an option, but I think we'll grab another Hostile and the Bioethics, I think is probably what we want. Not sure if those were great decisions there, but that's okay. So there's a museum, and do you know what? I think I'm just going to purge here. Well, he did use his two Grave Digger counters. Um, so it makes it a bit less appetizing than what it previously was. We could just double install here and potentially get a Kronos off, but then again, um, I'd hate for him to score it and just wipe the Cerebral Static when it really is just doing so much for us right now. What could I do? I could always do the Heritage Committee. Mm. We've got all three members out. We've got two museums in third in hand, so there's nothing we really want to be searching for right now. Yeah, it's just single draw. Tech startups, great. And yeah, let's just do that. So what this means now is we can use the tech startup to get the bioethics association out and all of a sudden we're going to start putting on the pressure. And it's exactly that point when you hit the mid game that you can get two or three bioethics associations out that the game just spirals out of control for the runner. 
So it's going to run the museum, which means we're going to have to, and um, we're going to have to res hostile infrastructure, which is absolutely fine. And let him come in and see if he wants to take a net. And we're still at risk of this grave digger actually bringing him, you know, through this game. It's doing some pretty good work, but he's got to get in there. And the thing is, it's a, not a great place to be. Uh, so he's going to run again. And again, to take out a museum. So I think putting this crick in front of this museum was actually a pretty decent call, although he's just checking servers. So feeling pretty good about the fact that we didn't try and get sneaky with a Kronos. So the asset, I mean, I see uh, a reason that Jackson could be pretty good here, but I think I'm just going to go into the Bioethics Association now and start to turn on this tempo. Let's get back. Museum, obviously, we just never want to run out of those. And I think tech startup again, just to try and encourage the bioethics associations to show up. Diversified portfolio is pretty good, if slightly unrequired. Yeah, so, I mean, right now, he could potentially grave digger, grave digger, and then Hades, but if he does that, he's gonna shock himself and put himself in a pretty rough position where um, a couple of bioethics could end the game. We're sitting on nine cards in archive, seven of them are face down. And this is just slowly going our way. Dirty Laundry is a good card here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't, do, we haven't been able to double up on our hostile infrastructures, which is what we really want to be doing. We are running three. Um, oh, he didn't actually trash it, okay. So maybe he's decided that he doesn't want to go down that route any longer. And I think, unfortunately, this is a pretty risky time to make that decision. Um, let us grab, I don't even know if I want to grab anything here. I got the Kamainu. Do I really want anything else? Turtlebacks, maybe? No. Interns? Yeah, I think I'll grab an interns. Just in case, it could be used to install something that he mills that we actually do want at some point. And there's another crick. Oh, so the interns now comes up straight away and there's nothing at this point really want to install except potentially the Ronin. Um, but I'm not bowled over by that. I might throw out the snare. He, he is running quite a lot. Um, I think a crick in front of this also, uh, this other hostile infrastructure may be a play, or indeed a crick in front of the Bioethics Association um, could be a play. In fact, yeah, I think I'm going to do just that. Although, again, installing this Ronin or Turtlebacks are really the only two things we would be after. What I am going to do, though, is install this Genetics Pavilion, which is going to mean he can't draw any cards beyond his wild side draw each turn. So that's all the cards he gets each turn. I can't help but want to really think of this game from the runner's point of view and try and work out what I would do here. The medium dig seems like a really solid play. Uh, right now with so many cards installed and so many cards in the bin, there's only 25 cards in R&D and six of those are agendas. So you know, hitting a global food's not that crazy. Um, Oh, is he going to potentially try and just Hades here? Which I'm actually going to let him do if he does. Uh, nope. Okay. So we, yeah, we'll definitely put the uh, the future perfect back in. I actually think I'm going to leave the hostile infrastructure there. Purely so I can just interns it next turn. Which is a little overkill. But I'm actually okay with it. And 
and then we will know what I want to do with my last click actually. I really would like some more ice. Uh, my R&D right now is not feeling uh, very strong. Uh, <laughs> I did tell him 31, I think. Pretty sure I did tell him that. Yeah, right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven servers installed. I think he mentioned twelve. Twelve remote servers was kind of his limit before he stopped being able to read text any longer. And we definitely want to install a couple more because we need our second and third bioethics associations installed here. We really do. Assuming he's probably not running a levy, considering we've seen at least one parasite, we've seen clone chips and ASOPs, and if he's not running a levy, um, yeah, this is going to get pretty bad for him with only 12 cards left in his deck. And the Cerebral Static, like, have to give it major props here. It's doing an incredible amount of work. Oh, lagging a wee bit for him. So I've seen some players concede against this deck. I mean, and that's the thing, it's pretty demoralizing. Um, I'm gonna be starting to work on decks myself to fight against this because um, it's pretty brutal. He hasn't seen, he hasn't seen any of his consoles yet. He hasn't seen a grimoire uh, or something like a turntable yet. Oh. He needs to be careful of his memory. Just as I was just thinking that, actually. Oh, okay. Decides to trash the Grave Digger. And... Okay, so yeah, we're definitely going to go ahead and res um, this other hostile infrastructure. Yeah, so unfortunately, and I don't like this myself, I see Crapstorm's kind of making the point to say he doesn't know why he's still playing, he literally cannot beat me at this point. And part of me agrees with him, but I still think like a big medium dig here could hurt us. Um, like, if we can get two or three ice in R&D, like I think that pretty much does the game. But right now we're sitting with a lot of points in our hand. Okay, we've got a fetal and a snare there. Um, but I think there's I think there's a couple of points where you know he could have maybe applied um, a lot of pressure and sort of moved away from the assets. Um, do we want to shuffle anything back in? Um, no, not really actually right now. There's a Kamini, which is great, and a Bioethics, which is just what we want to see. So we'll put the Kamini out over R&D, and then we'll shuffle back the other Kamini after, and the Bioethics goes out. And yeah, okay, so now, <laughs> now it's getting pretty bad. Yeah, so he's mentioning, um, I believe it's employee strike, which blanks an, uh, an ID, uh, the corp ID's text box. So in this case, it would allow him to trash stuff for free. But I, I legitimately think actually, but that would have made the biggest of differences in this game because he's not exactly floating a ton of cash. With the imps of what I've been kind of seeing him through. And uh, speaking of cash, there it is. I mean, run you run medium dig, you know, you potentially see, you know, global food and a future perfect. And if you win a future perfect, when there's three in there, um, oh, he's getting a bit aggressive now. <laughs> um, I'm not sure this was the right play. Although he does have Crypsis there. Yeah, you win a side game and get a future perfect and all of a sudden, you know, you, your game can just explode.
crypts is, you know, costing you an extra credit to boost. Uh, oh, doing one there. We had a medium, which is actually, I'm pretty happy to see go. And uh, is there anything else I want to raise or shuffle about? There's nothing else I can really do here. So let's see what happens. He did leave himself on two credits and he's seen two cards. So if he sees a future perfect here, it could be pretty big. Uh, he trashed and took two net from a bioethics association. Not sure if he realized that that would do two net to him. Yeah, and this is just now uh, insane. We'll take the Kamaini and the bioethics back. Turtle backs, we don't really care about. Museum, we don't really want to ignore, but uh, let's take the turtle back side. And in terms of getting rid of stuff here, I'm just going to bin the Jackson and the museum, I think. Our hand's still a pretty vicious place for the runner to come into. And yeah, I assume that he's not running a levy. If you were running a levy at this point, the game definitely wouldn't be. Uh... <laughs> so now we've hit the, the peak server maximum stage of uh, being able to unread here. I don't know what am I at here zoom wise. We're at 90%. It's not too bad. Hopefully you guys can still make this out. So three Moomba temples, uh, two Turtlebacks, one that's not res. We've got two hostile infrastructures. And we've got two bioethics associations and then we've got genetics pavilion which is preventing the runner from drawing more than two cards per turn so basically just letting him do his um wild side nothing else and okay we're seeing a run on hq which definitely has potential to yield and um, either an instant win for us um, or an agenda for the runner uh he's continuing the run but hasn't actually paid anything yet. Oh. So just checking with him what his, what his plan is here. Oh, we're firing them? Oh, uh... I can't actually see the card. <laughs> so I'm playing on sort of 1920 by 1080p here on quite a large monitor. So if you're on a small laptop, yeah, I can imagine. Ah, sort of. So yeah, he's just given up the game. I think he's realized he's hit Kamainu. He's not really going to be uh, anywhere. And yeah, it's not even fun. <laughs> So yeah, sorry, like I don't like to see guys obviously getting completely destroyed by the game. I don't feel like this was unwinnable for the runner. I'm going to have a quick look at the deck here. Um, so we still had one global food, three future perfect, two global food. So five agendas in there. Obviously slim pickings in the hand. He would have had to really hit one of the two uh, Kronos and global foods to kind of stay alive there. Um, all three grim margins in the bottom of his deck, he says, which is definitely a sore point considering he would have loved to have been just stacking maybe mediums, caches and, and parasites and just kind of getting rid of these ice as I res them. Um, the likes of being able to clone chip data sucker would have been good, but we actually hit a, a data sucker early, which I think did a lot for us. Um, and yeah, Crapstorm kind of saying what I think as well, that IG at the minute is incredibly powerful. Um, as ever guys in the comments below definitely tips in running this deck or indeed playing against it please fire them down and uh, hopefully i'll see you in the next video